G'day, welcome to Mount Cranberry Apiculture. It's Sunday the 23rd of June 2024. I had big intentions today of getting out and taking honey off hives. Uh, woke up to pouring rain, freezing cold weather. So yeah, here I am in the shed. I'm just doing a bit of work in the dry. Sitting on a fan heater and um, trying to stay warm. Just thought I'd go over the, um, the Varroa mite heat map in New South Wales just to show you um, how to find it and how to use it. Varroa's on the march and when you see this map you'll understand um, why. Um, so in Australia all you really need to put in is Varroa mite New South Wales into a search engine um, and it'll bring up the, the DPI website. Um, might take a little bit more googling if you're overseas if you're interested in having a look. That'll bring up the website <coughs> for our incursion history. So um, June 2022, we're two years on from um, from finding Varroa in, at the port of Newcastle. Lots happened, and uh, yeah, here we are. There's a few interesting links in here. So there's a, a prime fact in there you can go to. Um, if you've been blissfully unaware of Varroa and you have done no reading at all, that's where I'd start. So. You know, please go and have a look at it if you're unsure about Varroa and what's happening. Um, another link there to training too. So um, there's a lot of training workshops happening in New South Wales already. There's another another um, round of workshops about to start in the next couple of weeks, and that that'll be um, moved on into state as well as as Varroa spreads. So let's look at the heat map. So. The um, legend there, uh, the the red, the, the yellow to red is Varroa present, and the light blue to dark blue is, is Varroa absent. So each one of these little squares on this map is um, 10, 10 kilometres by 10 kilometres, which is 100 square kilometres. Um, so it shows you where Varroa is present and absent in New South Wales. Um, if you're sitting up here in Queensland and feeling um, smug, I would go and check your beehives because <laughs> I reckon there's Varroa up there. Same as well for um, Melbourne, for Victoria. Um, if you're feeling um, um, happy that you haven't got Varroa, I'd go and have a look, particularly if down on this border area. Um, I'd go and have a look in your beehives. So that's every detection and non detection in the last two years, um, which is kind of useful but not not so useful for me at the moment so if you go across to the top left hand side and click on that little arrow um, talks about the Varroa dynamic heat map click on the legend you can see there you've got filters you can click on um, so that's hive inspections for our present all time and hive inspections for our absent all time so if you unclick them you'll see the map clears so just for this check I'll um, look at um, Hive inspections present in the last 16 weeks. You can also click on um, the different types of um, maps as well. It's not that useful really because um, the the coloured squares kind of block it block it all out anyway. So it's not really that that advantageous. So I'll just take that filter off and go just go back to the map. So let's look at where these detections are. Um, this is the area I'm interested in here. So, um, Coffs Harbour, I'm just outside of those. Well, there's Nana Glen there. So, um, there's detections in, in this area within 10 kilometres. So, um, someone's found mites in each one of these squares it wasn't me um, so that's good that someone's detected it um, you actually go further up here um, five eight eight and up into here so the reason why those more detections up in those areas um, all this darker orange color is um, basically the largest blueberry growing area in Australia and there's thousands of beehives in there um, there's a few good diligent beekeepers that are doing checks and um, yeah there's mites in that area 
So if you're in the Coffs Harbour area, go and look in your beehives because there's a very good chance that Varroa is right right through here, um, right down into the Kempsey um, detection area. So you can see being detected up here. And good on those beekeepers for, for finding it and, and done reporting it. So this is in the Kempsey area here. Um, yeah, quite high mite numbers in the last 16 weeks. So um, mites have been there for a long time. Um, down into the Sydney Basin, that's Newcastle there. So you can see in the last 16 weeks, quite a few detections. And Sydney is, um, yeah, bright red. Down to Nara, south of Wollongong. And there's even a detection down at Bega, right down at the south of the coast there. And that's, you know, that's people moving beehives around, which they're entitled to do. Um, let's go back to the, um, to the legend there. Put that different filter on so you can see the dark blue areas is where people have looked and found no Varroa. So that's good. Um, it gives you, if there's a high, you know, a, a high incident of, of checks and they haven't found rows, it's probably a good indication it's not there, so, but yeah, I'd be looking pretty hard. Um, yeah, so, there we go, down into Wollongong, Canberra. So that's the heat map. Um, get on a play with it, certainly if you're in one of these areas close to, um, where the varroa has been detected, yeah, get in your hives and have a look please because um, you can have um, varroa in your bees for quite a while without it being detected and you need to get a no as quickly as possible so you can start some sort of um, integrated pest management and treatment to, to get on top of them. Alright, so there's a bit of rainy day help for you and um, yeah, good luck with the, with the mites.